no matter which planner you use, whether that's a Hobonichi, a Common Planner, a Wonderland 222 or something else entirely, it will most likely have some sort of monthly overview. Usually, these monthly pages consist of two facing pages, also called a spread, with a box for each day of the month. While most planners have spreads like these, the space you have for each day, the size of the box, can differ wildly. Maybe you always use the spread in the same way that just works for you. Or maybe you're more like me and you've struggled to use this page and want to try some new ideas. Or maybe you're just looking to spice things up and try something new. I've got you covered with 34 ideas on how to use your monthly pages. Now, just a note, this is a random monthly spread. April 2021 to be precise, that I copied from an old Hobonichi cousin, so the dates aren't actually relevant at all. Figured I would just mention that. And now let's dive into it, shall we? Probably the most classic or traditional way to use a monthly spread is to write down your events and appointments. For example, I might have a dentist appointment at 9 in the morning and have lunch with my mom at 1. Personally, I like to add a little arrow in front of the appointment to indicate that I have to go somewhere. And without an arrow, it usually means that it's either at my place or we haven't decided yet. So of course, you could also write down the location, uh, especially if it's less obvious where you have to be. For our second idea, we have deadlines. Contrary to an event, a deadline usually doesn't mean you have to do something on that specific day. Well, in an ideal scenario but rather in the days or weeks before. For example, if an assignment is due on this day, you might want to reserve some time in the days before to actually work on your assignment. Next up, we have important dates. This could be birthdays, anniversaries, holidays. One thing I like to write down sometimes are more novel national or international days. Did you know March 31 is National Tater Day in the US? I know what I'll be having for dinner on March 31 next year. I find that usually this little space on top, which is two boxes high, is enough to write down one item, so you could use the bigger box for something else. The fourth idea is to write down important dates related to your hobbies. Maybe there's a new music release, a book launch, a new video game you've been looking forward to. I find that seeing these things in my calendar can really hype me up. Another idea is to write down a reminder for the day. This may or may not be something you actively have to do. For example, take out the trash, or remember that there's some kind of maintenance going on and you won't have an internet connection for a few hours. For our sixth idea, we can write down our priority of the day. It is so easy to get distracted by all of these random side quests that pop up during the day that it can be helpful to remind ourselves of our main quest. If there's an assignment or any type of big project coming up, it is wise to plan ahead. You can use your monthly spread to break down a big assignment into smaller tasks and schedule these. So for example, on this day, we want to outline chapters 2 and 3. This way, you won't have to worry if you'll be able to finish the assignment in time. Next up, we have a cleaning schedule. Personally, I prefer doing a bit of cleaning every day as opposed to setting apart an entire day for cleaning. You can write down one or more specific cleaning tasks or write down the area that needs attention. For example, the kitchen or the living room. When your household consists of multiple people, it might be hard to keep track of who's, where, when. You can write down the activities of your household members, for example here, I noted that my partner was having drinks with his colleagues after work, so he'd be home late. Or you can use some type of icon or color coding to mark that something is relevant to you. For example here, I used a blue dot to mark that I'll have dinner alone. The tenth idea is to either plan or log your meals. I find that planning my meals for the week helps when I'm going grocery shopping and it might also be something you like to look back on. In that case, it's more a form of memory keeping than planning. Another idea is to either plan or track your exercise. This is especially useful if you have multiple types of exercise such as runs, walks, workouts and cycling for example. 
Next up, we have a tracker for your outfit of the day. This can be in written form, or you can doodle either your entire outfit or just one item of clothing that you wear that day. If you're like me and you just like to track things and log things, then maybe a media tracker is something for you. You can write down films, which episodes of a show you watched, how many pages or chapters of a book you read, etc. Habits. Whether you're just collecting data about yourself or trying to implement a new habit, there are many ways you can track habits in your monthly spreads. You can go small and put a check mark in the corner, you can list out multiple habits and check them off individually, or you can go big and just check off the entire box. For our 15th idea, we have a when did I last tracker. If you ever find yourself wondering, when did I last de-skill my coffee machine? Or when did I last take the cats to the vet for their yearly checkup? Those are things you can also put in your monthly spread. Of course, you could also consider planning the next time you have to do something. So for example, say you want to de-skill your coffee machine every 9 to 12 months-ish, you could pick a random date somewhere in that 9 to 12 month time frame, but I find that often feels very arbitrary. Next up, we have a spending log. Actually seeing what you spend can be helpful when you're trying to identify spending habits, when you're budgeting or when you're just trying to spend less money in general. The monthly spread may not be the most practical for a complete financial overview, but I do find it helpful for tracking online shopping, coffee to go, clothing, etc. I try to make an effort to do at least one thing really mindfully each day. Whether that is a chore, such as doing the dishes, or something I enjoy, such as cooking or playing the piano. No overstimulating myself with more videos and more podcasts, just being in the here and now. There are so many things we have to or want to do, whether that's for work, family, friends, chores in and around the house. So for our 18th idea, we have a log of something you did for yourself. Did you take a moment to sip on your morning coffee with a cat on your lap? Did you read a chapter of a book you're enjoying? Did you go for a walk on a sunny afternoon? Taking care of yourself, both physically and mentally, should be an essential part of your day, in my opinion. I have a soft spot for mood trackers, especially those really creative ones you often see in the bullet journaling community. My one problem with them, though, is that they often don't have room for notes. In order to see patterns and learn more about myself through my mood tracker, I like to log three things. The general mood of the day, for which I use a color, I often use yellow for bright, energized, excited mood. A number from 1 to 10 that indicates how I would score the day and a short note with anything related to my mood. Did I sleep well? Am I stressed about work? Did a remark from someone upset me? For our 20th idea, we have a symptom tracker. Depending on your health and household, this may be for yourself, for a child or even for a pet. Next up, we have a win of the day. What's something you've accomplished today? Something that you're proud of? It doesn't have to be something big at all, just something that feels like an accomplishment to you. If on some days the win of the day is getting out of bed and taking a shower, then go on, write it down. You're the only one who knows what feels like a win to you. Idea number 22 is a gratitude log. Often when I write down things in my gratitude log, I feel a bit silly, especially when it's something small like a cup of coffee in the morning sun or warm blankets in winter, but rereading these entries fills my little heart with happiness and I think we can all use that sometimes. Maybe you also want to add the things that you're less grateful for, or you want to write something about your thoughts and feelings that day, or a short list of what you did that day. Idea 23 is to use the monthly pages for just a bit of journaling. For our 24th idea, we have a daily observation. Taking in your surroundings is a great way to be a little bit more mindful. For example, you can write down something about what you notice on your daily walk. In that same vein, you can note the weather of the day. You can either look outside and note your own observation or use a weather forecast app to record the temperature, for example. If you do this small enough, you could easily fit this in the top bar of the box if you so wish. 
Idea 26 is to take a picture every day and then print it and paste it in your planner. This way you can fill your monthly pages with memories. Here I've just doodled a picture but you get the idea. Next up we have idea 27 which is a headline of the day. For this you look at the front page of a newspaper or other news outlet and write down what the headline is. If the amount of heartbreaking news in the headlines is not something you want to record in your planner, you can also try to find one piece of positive, hopeful or encouraging news each day. Are you ever surprised how many words in your native language you don't know? My native language is Dutch and I still frequently come across words that are new to me. For our 28th idea you can write down a word of the day. This can be a new word you learned, be it in your native language or another language that you're learning. Idea 29 is to write down a song of the day. What song were you listening to today that really caught your attention or that captured the mood of the day? For our next idea, we have a quote of the day. This can be either a motivational quote, something inspiring you read, or just something funny you heard the person behind you on the train say to their friend. One of my favorite ways to use this is to pick a lyric from a song that resonates with me. Idea 31 is to swatch, well, anything you want to swatch. A new fountain pen ink, your favorite brush pen, you can use this to fill an otherwise empty box, to track when you got that nice color or maybe pick a color for each day and see your page get more colorful by the day. If you actively plan content for social media, the monthly page can be used as a content planner. You can write down video ideas, ideas for Instagram posts, schedule when you want to release them, when you need to have the content ready, etc. It, it can be nice to have an overview of the month before you dive into the individual pieces of content. For our 33rd idea, we have a daily doodle. Many people want to draw more, but drawing can also feel quite daunting. Where do we even start? A daily doodle with very limited space is the perfect way to draw just a little more. You can doodle something random, something related to your day, or just follow any sort of doodle prompt challenge online. I might actually do this next year because, um, as you can see, I could use some practice. We are down to our last idea, which is using the monthly spread as an index for your daily pages. If you use a planner such as a Hobonichi Cousin or a Sterling in Common Planner, you have a whole page for every day of the year. Once you've filled those 365 pages, it can be hard to find a specific entry. Especially if, like me, you have a terrible sense of time. I remember what happened, but I have trouble remembering when that was. If you summarize your daily entry in one or two sentences in the monthly spread, you can use these pages as an index to quickly find that one entry you're looking for. As you can see, we have one more empty box. I could have tried to think of one more idea just to fill this out, but I feel like this is a good time to remind you that not every inch of your planner needs to be filled out. It's okay if some days you don't feel like writing your planner. Your planner is here to help you, not to be a burden. If, however, you were really craving some more ideas, how about we take a quick look at the empty space around the calendar? Again, depending on the type of planner you use, you may, have, you may either have a substantial amount of space around the calendar, or you may have no space at all. In the Hobonichi Cousin, there is enough space to make it usable. I find that the column on the left hand side is a good candidate for any type of list. So here I have listed parcels that I'm waiting on. You can check these off once the parcel arrives or maybe send an email if the parcel should have arrived but hasn't yet. Next up we have a list of reminders. This is particularly helpful for things that are coming up quite early in the month that follows. So for example if there's a birthday coming up you can remind yourself to buy the person a gift. Or if you need to do a certain task somewhere during the month, you can also put it in the sidebar just as a reminder. You can also adapt the sidebar to some kind of graph. In this case, I've made a sleep tracker and filled it with some fictional data. On the Y axis, you see the days of the month, whereas on the X axis, you see the hours of sleep. Admittedly, this one is arguably easier to read when you rotate the page, so depending on what you want to track, you could also use the space below the monthly calendar for a graph like this. 
If you track things on a daily basis, you might be interested in the total number of times you did X, Y, Z. In that case, you can count the days and put the total number down at the bottom of the page. So for example, the number of days you went for a walk and the number of days you practiced playing the piano. I use the plus and minus to indicate that the total is higher or lower than the previous month. And for our very last idea, you can record some of your favorite things from the month. This can be literally anything, of course, but I'm thinking favorite song, favorite film, favorite meal you had, things like that. And there you have it, 34 ideas for the monthly pages in your planner with a couple of bonus ideas for whatever room, room you have left around the actual calendar boxes. If you don't like a lot of repetition, why not throw some of these ideas together? Doodle your dinner on the one day, write an interesting headline from the newspaper on the next, something you're grateful for on the next, etc. The monthly pages have been somewhat of a struggle for me in the past and even doing this exercise of trying to come up with as many ideas as I could, I'm super excited to dive into these pages again. I hope this video was helpful for you and gave you at least one new idea that you're gonna try. And if so, please give the video a like and consider subscribing for more planner content. And I hope to see you in the next one. Have a good day. Bye!